Hey, so in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at 10 different profitable businesses for 2019. Now, when creating this video, we kept in mind that many people wanna start a business with a relatively small amount of money. So we're talking $1,000 or less to get started. Some of these don't require any money upfront to start your own business. Now, there's also gonna be some in here that are more so online businesses that you could do from home, while others might be more physical types of businesses uh, that you might be, have to be a little bit out and about for it. But uh, if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on this video, and let's get started. So the first one that we're gonna mention here is something that I use quite often as a service, uh, and that is by doing your own tours uh, through something like Airbnb experiences. Now, we're not talking about hosting in your home with Airbnb, we're talking about creating tours on this website. So if you live in a uh, city, you can do something like this where uh, you're not only giving maybe walking tours or historical tours or bike tours or boat tours. There's so many options here, but there's even some ones you can get pretty creative with. For example, bar crawls, pub crawls, you can get paid to essentially take people out and drink and there's a big business in that. So there's so many options behind this that I think you just wanna look into it a little bit and Airbnb is not sponsoring this video but I just think it's quite interesting and a great business opportunity especially if you're great as a people person and you love talking and interacting with people, this could be a wonderful option for you. So the next one is by meal prepping and delivering food. So uh, this is not a new business. This has been, been around for quite some time but a lot of wealthy people find themselves with not enough time or maybe they just don't want to actually cook their own food, but they don't want to eat out every day. They don't want to have to get Uber Eats every day. So they want somebody to kind of create these home-cooked meals for them. So a lot of people, for example, Sam Ovens does this, uh, will actually have a personal chef or somebody come in once or twice a week, cook food in their home, and then package it up, put it in the fridge, put it in their pantry so that they have food for the week and they know what meals they're gonna have for the week and it's home cooked food. Uh, and a lot of people like this. And once you kind of build up this clientele, it's difficult to lose these clients uh, as, as people who are looking for somebody to cook for you. Now, uh, if, if you are uh, in the food industry, this is definitely a bonus because you're already probably pretty experienced in cooking and creating meals. But there's no real barrier to entry for this so long as you are a decent cook and you're not a college kid who only knows how to make ramen noodles. Okay, so the next one is by becoming a personal trainer. Now, personal training is something that's going to be around for a very long time. That's because people care very dearly about their health, or at least they should. Uh, and so a lot of people can't motivate themselves to go to the gym, and they don't know what exercises to do. And so, especially if you find yourself as a physically fit person, you like working out, then you might want to explore this option because it can be a great side business or full-time business. Uh, a lot of people do it as a side business, though, because um, many people will do this before or after work. So it'll probably fit in with your schedule as well. You don't have to necessarily have your own gym in order to become a personal trainer. It's very smart to get certified as a personal trainer. But like I said, the overhead cost for it can be very low to get started in something like this. And I think it's something that uh, really, it's, it's an experience that uh, is very rewarding. Helping somebody go from maybe not very fit to maybe the most healthy they've ever been in their life. It's definitely a great experience and uh, uplifting for most people. So the next one uh, is something that uh, I was talking to Eric Sue back in October and we were discussing some different business ideas and I asked him what he would uh, advise people to start a business. What would be the number one business that he would advise? And he said consulting. Consulting and service-based businesses. And there's a reason for this and it's because uh, when you are doing something like consulting, we could think about graphic design or web development, web design, you could think about a lot of marketing services, but you're essentially providing services to people. So you don't have inventory, you don't have a lot of overhead costs, uh, and so your total uh, money coming in is mostly profit. It's usually about 90% profit. Sometimes you don't even have to have your own office if you are a consultant uh, and you're going into firms and companies where they don't want to hire their own person in-house, so they just hire somebody as a consultant to come in for a day or two to provide their services. So something that if you can find a skill to build in the consulting area, something you might want to think about. Uh, and so the next one here is a little bit more physical, uh, and that is by starting your own moving service business. Now, when I was 16, somebody paid me $230 to help move all of their furniture and their refrigerators and their massive safe from one house to the next. And $230 when I was 16, that was a lot 
of money. And I was, I was dumbfounded by this when they handed the money over. But they said, yeah, you actually saved us over $1,000 because if we paid a moving service, we would have paid so much money to move all of our stuff over from one house to the next. And that's when it really opened my eyes to realize there's a lot of money in the moving service business. And you don't have to have your own uh, uh, trucks and box trucks to be able to do this. You can just provide your labor if they essentially uh, will maybe rent a U-Haul. You can provide your labor uh, and start to bootstrap your own moving service. And there is a decent amount of money in this. Obviously, it's very laborious and it's not something you can do for a long period of time without kind of outsourcing some work and hiring some other people to do some heavy lifting after some time. So uh, there are some more on this list here. And this next one is by starting your own Etsy store. Now you could also think about maybe starting your own eBay store, but Etsy is a little bit more artistic uh, for people and a lot of people will sell vintage clothing on there. They will create jewelry, create different products that they can then sell. And what's great about this is that uh, there's really a search engine within Etsy. So when people search certain products, you don't have to do the marketing behind it because it's already in that database. So it's, it's not like you're creating your own product and then trying to start your own website and uh, build that website up so you can get SEO and, and kind of uh, get found on Google or trying to promote it on Instagram, sell it directly through Etsy and it's kind of already taken care of a good portion of that marketing. And that's what I like about something like that. Uh, but even people will go to, uh, for example, thrift shops and yard sales, buy clothing, sell it as vintage clothing on Etsy and get a lot of money. We're talking $100 for some jackets that you can buy that people found for a dollar at a yard sale. So there could be a lot of money in that. And I wanted to include it in this list because it's something that people can do uh, primarily from home or uh, whenever they really have some spare time on their hands to make some extra cash. Number four is to sell a physical product. Now, in some cases, uh, there could be a little bit of a cost behind this, especially if you need patents for products, but there's obviously a lot of money in this. Pat Flynn just launched an interesting, essentially, tripod, kind of uh, matches the Gorilla Pod, but he launched it and he funded it through, I believe, Kickstarter, which is a website, not sponsoring this video, but a website uh, that essentially allows you to crowdfund for your business, for your product that you might be selling. So back in the day, if you wanted to launch a product, you would have to find an investor somewhere and probably go to angel investors or large business owners and try to get them to invest into your company. Well, today you can do something known as crowdfunding, which essentially means that uh, thousands or hundreds of people can uh, pitch in money, maybe 20 or 50 or $100 into your business for your physical product idea. And then you can sell that and essentially raise capital capital that way so that you can start creating this product, building it, building prototypes, and selling it. Uh, and so I think it's just a quite interesting idea. If you're trying to create one, look, you want to find a way to fix a problem, solve a problem, or find a way to make something more efficient in our everyday life. Uh, that's really a move that people are going for, is just find something and make it more efficient. It sounds easy, but it's very difficult, trust me. So inventing something, very difficult, but could bring up a lot of money. So uh, the next one is starting your own event planning service. Now, there's really two routes that you can go here. You can go with uh, something more so on the corporate side of things. Like for example, you're uh, hosting corporate events, you're planning these different uh, meetings and conferences, or you could go the social personal route where people are uh, needing people to help plan for their weddings. I know personally, when I have a wedding, I'm not gonna want to worry about the stress of trying to plan everything out and make sure that the logistics are all lined up. I want somebody to do it for me. And so there's a lot of money in that industry. About $500 billion are spent every year on special events around the world. So people are throwing a lot of money at this. You can start your own event planning service. It's not easy. It's not something you just walk into, especially weddings. They're very special days, so you don't want to mess that up. But build experience over time, shadow somebody, and then eventually start your own service. So number two is to create your own clothing business. Now, so many people try and fail at this. And the reason for that is because a lot of times they don't have a specific enough target market. So you can't go after everybody. Uh, it's hard to just launch a company like Nike or Supreme or Gucci. Uh, but in many cases, look, you want to think about the way that people feel when they wear that clothing. So if you're just creating a brand and throwing a name on a t-shirt and just trying to sell it uh, with no meaning behind it and no specific target market, it's going to be very difficult because people are just going to look at it and say, oh, but you want to create a sort of a feeling that they get. Uh, what, how does it represent them? What type of person are they? Uh, and that will kind of give you a better idea of how to target specific people. For example, when somebody throws on a Gucci jacket that they bought for $5,000, do they buy it because they like the way that it looked? Probably, most likely. But there's also a lot of people who buy it because they like the way that it feels when people are looking at them seeing 
you know, that's a $5,000 jacket. Everybody knows it. Uh, and so it, it gives them this feeling uh, uh, that people really like in the way that they express themselves. So it's just something you want to really think about very deeply before you just go out and make some t-shirts and try to sell them without true meaning behind it. So the final business here might not be a scalable million dollar business, but I think it could be a great side income for people to make. And that is by starting your own pet sitting service. Now, a lot of people, when they go on vacation, they don't want to take their dog to the kennel. Uh, they want to keep their dog at home, but obviously you can't leave it there for a week or their cats. So somebody comes in and takes after them, takes care of them and gets paid usually a couple hundred dollars for a week of just feeding their animals uh, and hanging out with them, playing with them a little bit and making a decent amount of money. You get a bunch of clients lined up and these clients will usually last for a very long time. We're talking lifetime customers. Every time they go on vacation, you look after their animals, make a couple hundred dollars, and it could be a great side income to make at least ten or twenty thousand dollars per year by doing this. So, uh, if you found any value in this video, make sure you drop a like, uh, share this with somebody who you think this could help, and I'll see everybody next time.